Welcome to Trial Site News Weekly Roundup. Today, we'll be talking about a story titled Generic Drug Repurposing for COVID-19, The Israeli Perspective, which is another look at ivermectin. Then, a few highlights from the Frontline Critical Care Alliance press conference that we had on the iMask and MathPlus protocol updates on this last Friday. And finally, a story on RLF 100, severe COVID-19 patients benefit from the drug. All of this starts now. Tel Aviv University's SPARK program recently hosted a webinar titled Generic Drug Repurposing for COVID-19, the Israeli Perspective. In collaboration with MedInsight Institute, presenters included Professor Alex Jadad, Faculty of Medicine and School of Public Health, University of Toronto, Canada, and the Executive Director of MedInsight Research Institute from both New York and Israel, the director of the Center of Bioengineering, the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, and Professor Eli Schwartz with the Sheba Medical Center at Tel Aviv University, Israel, who presented the Sheba Ivermectin Project, or SIP. So establishing a movement in Israel to consider the repurposing of generic drugs for purposes of economically and forcefully targeting COVID-19, the drugs discussed in this presentation included ivermectin, are potentially safe, effective, and widely accessible. The organizers of this event are clear for the world to hear. They said that of the 9,000 currently approved drugs that exist globally, the potential for overcoming COVID-19 certainly exists. Now, Trial Site News previously introduced the work of Dr. Eli Schwartz and his clinical trial investigating the use of ivermectin in mild to moderate COVID-19 cases. We have, in the past, briefly discussed the ivermectin evidence with Dr. Swartz on a telephone call. Both he and Trial Site News founder Daniel O'Connor concurred that there was a perplexing lack of interest among major biomedical research agencies. Dr. Schwartz, a well-known Israeli tropical medicine expert, reminded the world of the importance of having medicinal approaches for the early onset stage of the disease, especially during a period where there isn't a fully approved vaccine. Now, Dr. Schwartz introduced his study, Ivermectin versus Placebo for the Treatment of Patients with Mild to Moderate COVID-19, a double-blind, randomized controlled trial. He emphasized that his treatment is applied at the early onset of the disease. This is critically important for purposes in the U.S. and beyond, where there has been little breakthrough in the development of novel ways to treat patients infected with SARS-CoV-2 at this stage. Now, Schwartz acknowledges that while there are a number of randomized controlled studies ongoing, few have actually been completed to date. Dr. Schwartz's SIP study was approved by the Sheba Medical Center, IRB, and the study is registered under the Israeli Minister of Health under the name My Trial, as well as under the US-based clinicaltrials.gov as NCTO 442911. Now, although Schwartz has concurred with trial site news that the accumulating evidence for government support is compelling, dozens of case series, observational studies, and a handful of randomized controlled trials point to clear signals that ivermectin research should be supported by public research agencies. Even with imminent emergency use authorization of vaccines, other early stage treatment protocols must be considered, especially in poorer countries. This is clearly important as evidenced by the World Health Organization's support of the anti-COVID study showcased by Trial Site News recently. Now, Dr. Schwartz and the Sheba Ivermectin Project's goal was to evaluate the effect of ivermectin and its ability to prevent progression of clinical disease and determine ability for viral shedding among mild to moderate COVID-19 patients. So then let's talk about some challenges. Dr. Schwartz shared some of the challenges faced, including a complete lack of financial support, low patient compliance, and a challenge finding patients that fit within the inclusion criteria. The study is not complete as of yet, and unfortunately, given that the study started in May and was scheduled to complete in October, the study is severely at risk of not concluding with any results. Now, Dr. Schwartz concluded his portion of the seminar by sharing an email from a physician emphasizing the importance of the study and that the world was waiting. The Shima medical doctor and investigator responded that due to the challenges shared, he unfortunately wouldn't answer whether this wonder drug, so to speak, ivermectin, for purposes of economically treating early onset COVID-19 is either a magic bullet or a fake messiah. Now, a little bit about Professor Eli Schwartz. Dr. Schwartz's Center for Tropical Medicine has been recognized by the Ministry of Health for Israel for Tropical and Travel Diseases. Now, we suggest that those interested in supporting Dr. Eli Schwartz's research reach out and contact him 
And you can reach out to him by following the link in the description below. Now, back on Friday, we covered the Frontline COVID-19 Critical Care Alliance News Conference on their updates for the Math Plus and iMask protocols, which, of course, involves some major public updates for the drug ivermectin. Here are a few of the highlights of this video. Take a look. Outcomes in this hospital at United Memorial Medical Center, our mortality rate since we implemented Math Plus protocol has been less than 5%. I mean, that's a huge improvement as compared to the rest of the, of the country. So we create that protocol, but then we realize that people were dying. And that's why we're here today. Today, December the 4th, we're calling people to action. It is a time of national and a global health crisis. Just yesterday, those of you know it, those of you members of the press, more than 210,000 new cases of COVID in the United States. That patients who get COVID need to be treated early at home. What is the point of waiting at home until you get overwhelming lung disease and you cannot breathe and are then admitted to hospital? That makes no sense. We want to treat these people early at home to prevent them progressing to the late phase. Now, while we have the math protocol, which has had an impact on the hospital treatment, patients are still suffering and patients are still dying. So we have to put our emphasis on the prevention and early treatment of this disease. And we believe we have a solution. This solution is the iMask Plus protocol. This is for the prevention and early treatment of COVID-19. The prevention or prophylaxis protocol is based on ivermectin, which is, a, as we'll see, a remarkable antiviral agent. In addition, we add some therapeutic agents which, include, which increase the host's immune system so that he can fight off infection. We then move to the early outpatient protocol, and it's essential that treatment be started in early. Once the diagnosis is suspected or confirmed, patients should be treated early with the goal of preventing progression to the stage where patients have to be hospitalized. And again, for the early outpatient protocol, we suggest the use of ivermectin, again, together with some other therapeutic agents, again, to improve the host's immune response. I want to summarize uh, this really incredible and very compelling emerging data. Before I do that, I want to be clear. This press conference is about a call to action. We are asking our healthcare authorities to review these data and provide us more specific guidance. While we wait for that, I'm asking every healthcare provider in the country, the doctors, the nurse practitioners, the physician assistants, to please review our manuscript in which we've compiled all of this data it is extremely compelling and you need to educate yourselves because we believe you can truly help patients. There are 100,000 patients in the hospital today in the United States. We need to stop filling the hospitals. Now, we have growing numbers of studies. Since the manuscript was completed days ago, it is already out of date. There are studies coming out last night, the day before. There are at least 35 studies all studies show positive benefits. The majority show decreases in mortality, decreases in hospitalization. The most important aspect of this data, and just recently in a major medical U.S. journal, a study <clears throat> done in Broward County by Dr. Raster again showed the same thing, decreases in mortality, especially amongst the most severely ill. This drug saves lives. The other thing that it does, and this is, again, as my colleagues mentioned, how this has been a gift in this pandemic, is its efficacy as a prophylactic prevention agent. We now have four large trials, including over 1,100 patients, three of them well-designed randomized controlled trials. And I want to go through them because I think they're extremely important that everyone understands how to protect themselves from this illness. The first one, done in Egypt, over 300 patients, they, they, they took patients who were positive for COVID-19, they identified all of their household members, and in over 200 of those household members, they told them to take ivermectin. In the other group of COVID-19 patients, they did not give the household members ivermectin. 
And as you can see on this slide, 7% of those who took ivermectin contracted COVID-19 compared to almost 60% of those that didn't prophylax with ivermectin. You could see that with ivermectin, it absolutely protected uh, almost perfectly most of the household members. Be clear that many of those household members probably were already exposed when they took ivermectin. Um, similarly, in India, in an, the old India Institute of Medical Sciences, many of the physicians on the front lines with high risk exposures, some of them started taking prophylaxis. In those healthcare providers that took ivermectin prophylaxis, only 16% got sick, while their colleagues who did not take it, 60% got the disease. Another study just came out last week, again, a randomized controlled trial done in Iran where they prophylaxed, again, household and healthcare contacts of those with COVID-19, only 2% got sick if they took ivermectin, compared to the 10% that did not. The most encouraging is this study, where they gave prophylaxis to healthy citizens in the population. They were not exposed. They were told to take ivermectin for a month. At the end of that month, nobody on ivermectin got this disease, compared to 11% of those healthy citizens that did not. This is an effective therapy. We all know this study just came out in a French journal, and this is extremely important. We know about how this pandemic has hit some of our long-term care facilities and nursing homes the hardest. We have had many of our elderly citizens die. In this nursing home, it's almost a, a fortuitous or lucky circumstance, but what happened was in one nursing home in France, there was a scabies outbreak. Ivermectin is, against, is very effective against scabies. All of the patients or the people living in that facility were on ivermectin at the time that one of the residents got sick. They were completely protected from the spread. Nobody in that facility got this illness. In local uh, other homes where they were not on ivermectin, 22% of the residents got this disease. And if you know anything about this disease, the older you are, the more frequently you die. Those That, that saved lives in that nursing home. Now, for a final story of this episode, a recently showcased on local media, North Paulette, Nebraska's Great Plains Health, has treated at least 20 patients with Avipdadil, or RLF-100, an investigational product recently submitted for emergency use authorization back in September. Now, one of those surviving patients, Mark Cardenas, went on air to share his experience and thanks for the access. It literally may have saved his life. Now, it's produced by a Swiss company called Relief Therapeutics. Great Plains Health Infectious Disease physician Eduardo Fritas heard about the drug via a network of other physicians, and it was through that network that Dr. Fritas was able to secure communication channel with US and Israel-based NeuroRx, the biotechnology company that co-develops the drug for commercialization. Trial Site News has reported on a few situations in Texas where patients with severe COVID-19 experienced marked improvement thanks to access to the drug opened up by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration via clinical trials and expanded access protocols. Now, it is through the latter that GPH was able to offer the investigational product to select patients facing severe COVID-19 conditions. Now, GPH is a small regional health referral center based in Nebraska, just left the center in the state. Although the population where they reside is just under 25,000, the 116-bed health center serves as a much broader area covering West Nebraska, Northern Kansas, and even into Northern Colorado. Now, it's heavily rural. GPS's primary and secondary services areas span 34 counties, 136,000 people, and approximately 67,832 square miles, totaling in size what amounts to the state of Pennsylvania. Now, the physician networks can tap into new possibilities and potentially save lives, and that's perhaps what occurred here as in late August and September, Dr. Eduardo Fritas learned of and connected with RLF-100 and NeuroRx via these networks. The COVID-19 cases were on the rise, and GPH was facing the challenge of numerous patients needing long-term ventilation, as reported by Danielle Shank with ABC Nebraska TV. Now, Dr. Fritas learned that this drug, not approved by the FDA, but involved with clinical trials and apparently available via an expanded access program, studied up on the drug while also introducing to his staff prior to identifying priority patients. Now, GPH's Dr. Fritas commented on local media being cautious and rightfully so. He is a beat on the potential of the drug, but understands there cannot be claims made that aren't backed by scientific evidence. He noted, though, that the results are promising and he hasn't observed any safety events so far. Now, during a clinical trial, the results also showed some promise. NTV shared the results of patients who had been treated with the drug, sharing that the report 
of the 90 patients who reached 28 days of follow-up, 72% of those patients survived to day 28. And of course, we'll keep you posted on this story as it continues to develop.